Hello, and welcome to Drug Air Talk. I'm Matt Hamilton, and I'm joined here by Jesse Garcia. Today we're talking about Stephen Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis, and the errors that lead to these two deadly conditions. Uh, Dr. Garcia, welcome. Uh, let's inform our audience, what is your area of specialty, sir? Sir, I'm a clinical pharmacist. I specialize in drug interactions and the effects on the human body. And I, of course, am a drug error trial attorney uh, representing the victims. Uh, Stephen Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. These aren't caused coincidentally, are they, doctor? Uh, they are not. We typically see these conditions um, caused by a number of different mistakes um, within drug prescribing um, and subsequent lack of information given to the patient. And you see these mistakes as part of your profession from time to time. What sort of mistakes are we talking about, doctor? So with some medications, uh, we see the medication not being titrated. So titration is essentially where a drug is given in smaller doses and steadily increased over a period of time, set period of time. So they might be on a certain drug per, uh, milligram for, say, a week, and we'll bump it up. I on see. that for a week, and we bump it up a little bit more. Starts in small amounts and then slowly goes up. Correct. And the idea behind that is some medications given at a higher dose can cause effects such as uh, Steven Johnson syndrome. Okay. But if we titrate it okay, or increase it slowly over time, we don't see such a uh, dramatic response from the body. Your body gets used to it and doesn't react so strongly. Exactly. Okay. So failing to titrate issue number one. Uh, and the persons that would be making that mistake would be the doctor prescribing it and the pharmacist failing to recognize that. Correct. Um, you know, they, they definitely the prescriber wants to inform the patient this is the way it's supposed to be taking in lieu of, um, you know, having them start at a higher dose. Now, in some cases, uh, say in the case of lamictal or lamotrigine, they make starter packets, okay? Very expensive. Insurance typically doesn't want to pay for it. And so what we might see is that the doctor writes several different prescriptions, one for the first week, one for the second week. So if they're not taken or if they're not written to be taken in sequential order and the patient's not given that information on how to take it, then we can definitely see that you know, present itself in a problem. So this isn't merely writing the prescription wrong. It's also failing to inform the patient of the importance of it and what to look for. Absolutely, because you can write the prescription correctly in terms of you know, take this dose for this length of time. But if you don't tell the patient in what order they should take those, then you're almost defeating the purpose. Okay. All right. So titration's an issue. Uh, what are some other errors that you've seen? Uh, the other ones that we would see would be uh, the um, lack thereof informing the patient of potential allergy problems or if the physician um, isn't checking the profile or doesn't see that the patient has an allergy. For instance, you know, maybe they're prescribed an antibiotic for some type of dental work. You know, it's not necessarily something that um, the patient might think to put on their uh, information for the dentist, okay? So they need to be, be sure to fill that out. Or if it's on there, that the dentist then recognizes that that is a potential for Stephen Johnson syndrome. So the doctor, the dentist, the, the pharmacy needs to ask, and it needs to look to see if it's there before giving that drug out. Correct. Okay, all right. And uh, are they also supposed to be telling the patient anything to look for? Of course, um, we know that there are certain class of drugs or classes of drugs that are more closely associated with this type of response, the Steven Johnson syndrome. And so it's imperative for us as clinicians and the uh, um, physicians to let the patient know these are things you want to watch for. You'll typically see Steven Johnson show up as flu symptoms, uh, progressively showing into a rash that's different than if you had kind of an allergic reaction. It'd be more of a purple rash instead of a red rash. So those are the types of symptoms that, um, you know, if caught early, can be uh, treated with much more effectiveness. So that doctor needs to not only tell that patient what to look for, but also the critical life-changing and threatening importance of it, because the doctor can't be around the patient all the time, and it's the patient that's got to be the first one to spot it. Correct. So the, the uh, responsibility lies 
on the prescriber side when they're choosing these different medications because you have a, a plethora of medications that can be chosen. So if you're going to pick these medications, these are the things that you need to inform the patient of. Okay, if, I, if I'm a physician and I'm going to prescribe a medication, I need to know that in this case, this is a medication that I need to let my patient know to watch for a rash, set up that monitoring. If it, they're going to be on it for a long-term therapy, make sure that we're watching that. So the, the physician, the pharmacist, they need to also monitor that patient that's on these drugs? Correct. Okay, all right. So we've got failing to inform, failing to monitor, failing to spot the uh, allergies and other issues with them. Um, should the doctor be contacting these patients and, and asking them whether they're recognizing any symptoms? Yes, you would, you would want some sort of uh, feedback you know, if it's not them directly calling back saying, okay, watch for these symptoms, and if in two or three weeks you don't have these symptoms, um, you know, don't give us a call. But if you start to notice this, um, then give us a call. Creating some uh, responsibility, whether it be the patient to watch for these symptoms, but therein lies the issue. The patient has to know what they're looking for. If the physician says, oh, well, call me back in three weeks and tell me if you're doing okay, well, they might be getting treated for another condition. So say it's an antibiotic, the, and the uh, uh, infection might be gone, but now we're seeing this skin reaction that's beginning to form. I see. So the doctor, the nurse may call them up and ask, how are you doing? And just to be polite, that patient might be saying, fine. But in reality, they've got flu-like symptoms, uh, which is an early sign of Steven Johnson syndrome. Correct. And so by saying fine, uh, they really aren't fine. And the doctor, the, the treatment provider, needs to ask specifically, are you, see, are you seeing these types of symptoms? Correct. Are you having any flu symptoms? You know, Because if the initial condition was respiratory or say it was a tooth infection of some sort and they've been put on this, okay, well, if I went to the dentist to get an antibiotic and I ask you, how are you doing? You're going to immediately refer to that you know, and say, oh, well, my tooth no longer hurts. So evidently the medication worked. Now, I might be you know, having fever, chills, early signs of Stephen Johnson's, and never mention that to them because it's not directly related to the tooth infection. That's where the um, onus lies on the, on the practitioners to make sure that they let the patient know specifically what to look for in cases just like that. So Stephen Johnson's syndrome and its, its deadly worst cousin, uh, toxic epidermal necrolysis, are these just coincidental? Uh, symptoms that just happen to happen to people, or are they the result of real error? We see those typically with offending agents, meaning drugs, or some agent that caused that. You don't really see instances, uh, large case instances, where you have severe uh, reactions, where you can get into the tens, uh, where you're seeing sloughing off the skin, um, inability to you know to maintain body temperature. You don't really see that with uh, non-offending agents. It's gotta be a drug, it's gotta be something that's causing this. Because first sign or first thing we do when we see this is we remove the agent. That's the first thing we do because we don't wanna make this thing progress onto any worse. So if somebody situation. gets Steven Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis, a mistake was made at one or more points in the process. Most definitely. Dr. Garcia, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you again. Thank you. For more information on, on uh, Stephen Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis, I'd like to point you to our website, worldwideweb.law-kc.com. In it, you'll find extensive pages on the various drugs that lead to these two deadly uh, syndromes and also uh, links and other research uh, that will help you in understanding these conditions. Uh, I'd also like to point you to our uh, website and YouTube uh, because we've had a series of uh, films about these two syndromes. It's been Drug Air Talk. I'm Matt Hamilton. Thank you for joining us.